somebody's watching this this morning and uh, and they don't know you and they haven't accepted your son as their personal savior that lord they would see their need they would recognize that they're a sinner and accept the perfect gift that jesus gave lord be with our service this morning be with each and every person that's tuning in today in jesus name we pray amen <laughs>
offering. This next song here, we're going to go ahead and pray and, and ask the Lord to bless our offering this morning. But as we uh, as we go into this next song of He is Exalted, uh, I encourage you to jump over to our website and, and uh, participate in, the, in our offering this morning, if you would, um, as, and give as the Lord asks you to give. Father, thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for the, ser the service that we can attend. Lord, we pray that you'd be with this offering. Lord, we pray that you'd bless both the gift and the giver alike. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
single little care to you, Lord. Father, help us to, to rely on you more. Help us to trust in you more. And not to try and take things under our own power and our own strength, because Lord, our power and strength compared to yours is, is nothing. And Lord, we pray that you just help us to rely on you. Father, be with the message to follow. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. When you're up against a wall and your mountains seem so tall and you realize life's not always fair, you can run away and hide. Let the old man. Or you can change your circumstances with a prayer when everything falls apart. Praise his name when you have a broken heart. Raise your hands and say, Lord, you're all I need. Raise your hand. 
hands and say, Lord, you're all I need. You're everything to me. And you'll take the pain away. When it seems you're all alone, praise his name. When you feel you can't go on, raise your hands and say, appreciate that. Let's take a verse of the Bible that talks about casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. And we do that through prayer. We do that as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer and we seek his face. And that's what we want to talk about here this morning as we continue down our road dealing with essential equipment, things that are important and vital to the life of every Christian. And certainly among those is prayer. We've looked at the idea of forgiveness. We looked at the idea of uh, uh, making sure that we uh, forgive one another. We've talked about the idea of uh, fear and anxiety and all kinds of different things. And a couple of weeks ago, we kind of zeroed in here in 1 Thessalonians, where the Apostle Paul is kind of going down what seems to me a list of things that are essential and important. He talks about giving thanks in all things, and we've talked about that talks about the idea here of uh, quenching not the Spirit of God. We talked about that last week. And here this morning, I want to deal with this phrase here in verse number 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Prayer certainly is a vital part of every Christian. I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself was asked a question by the disciples about prayer. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, uh, give us some instruction about prayer. And lo and behold, the Bible is full of some instruction about prayer and how to pray. And let's just kind of zero in on one text in particular in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 13. Jesus is speaking here and he's teaching the disciples about this thing about prayer. And I believe he's teaching us as well. Verse number five says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see in this introductory verse here, we see Jesus saying there is a difference between the, some that pray and others. There are some hypocrites out there that love to pray in front of everybody. And they pray for the praise of men. And God says they have their reward. And so we see that there are some different types. Where there's a place and time of public prayer. We've done that on more than one occasion here in this auditorium already this morning. We've had public prayer before others. But we're not praying to seek praise of men. We're praying and asking God to do a work in our heart and in our life and in this midst and in this very congregation. Verse number six goes on and he says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which, is see which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as he then do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, but your Father knoweth the things that ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye. And I believe the Lord gives us a sample prayer. We sometimes refer to it as the Lord's Prayer, 
But I believe as we look at this inside the context, the Lord is saying, here is a framework. Here's what a prayer should contain. He says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is uh, in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Here in this passage we see a lesson on prayer. This morning I'd like us to dive into that and look at this idea of prayer without ceasing. Or we could put a title on it, Lord, teach us to pray. Or how should we pray? What are some of the, as prayer is part of that essential equipment, something that we need to have as a believer, we need to be able to effectively go to the Lord in prayer. And so let's look here at number one, I want you to see prayer should be a priority. Prayer should be a priority. It says here in our text, when thou prayest. He doesn't say if thou prayest, he says when thou prayest. It's a command. It said this is something that is expected. This is something that God expects all of us to do. He says when you pray, it's something he looks at with expectation. It's God says, I want my people to pray. God commanded us to pray. It's something that God clearly says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 over in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, we see God putting that emphasis on prayer. It's part of the Christian life. It's something that God wants us to make a priority. Is prayer a priority in your life? Do you spend time consistently in prayer? Do you even have a time for prayer? You know, we have times when we typically refer to our bedtime or a time in which we would go to bed. All of us certainly have a time in which we would say, it's time for me to eat. Sometimes, I, I just the other day, I was getting a little bit hungry, and I said, boy, at least I'm hungry. It seems like it should be time for dinner. Do we do that in our prayer life? Do we have a time that we have set aside in which we would spend time in prayer? I mean, good night, if we, wanna, if we need to eat three times a day, we need to uh, sleep uh, uh, throughout the day, we, we uh, certainly need to take care of our personal hygiene throughout the day, and we have time for that, we have time for entertainment, we have all kinds of things that we dedicate time for. It seems like prayer should be one of those things. Have some time. Is it a priority? We will seem to accomplish the things that we do set a priority upon, and God expects us to put a priority on prayer. Sad but true, sometimes people only pray when they need something. Or perhaps maybe when they're called upon in public or, or, or what have, have you. That should not be the case. Here I believe as we look at this, this in context, Jesus is talking about this time of private prayer, a relationship, a, a time of communication between his child, you and I as a Christian, and our Heavenly Father. It ought to be a priority in our life. It's, it's communication. Uh, listen, you take communication out of any relationship, and that relationship will fail. We must have a priority of prayer in the life of every Christian. Secondly, Prayer is personal. Prayer is personal. It's something between the believer and God. He says here, he, he makes it as a contrast. Here he says, in contrast to the hypocrites, in contrast to those who, who really, they, they, they make an appearance of being believers, but they're really not. He says that there, there's something here that, that needs to be personal. It needs to be uh, uh, private, if you will. And he says here, there are some, there are hypocrites who like to pray in public places. They like to be seen of others. And he says, but, but you, your prayer, it ought to be in private. He says, go to a closet. Go in a place where others are not looking. Go in a place where you are able to pray to a holy God. 
And again, we're not talking about public prayer here. We're talking about a private prayer time between you and, you and I as believers and a holy God. And God says one of those aspects is prayer is personal. It's something that we are talking to God. Simply put, there are things that we need to say to God and we can say directly to God that really, frankly, ought not to be in the earshot of others. What a wonderful thing to know that you and I as believers can go and bring the most personal things to us to a holy God and we have the ear of God to hear those things that we're struggling with, those things that we're having difficult with, yeah, even those sins that we are struggling with in, a, uh, in our personal lives that we uh, don't want others to know but God already knows and we can bring them to God and we can talk to God in prayer about those things. Prayer is personal. Prayer is private. When we pray, we have the liberty to just simply pour out our heart to God. There's nothing that's hidden from God. And so he says, get alone with God. Get in a private place and pray and, and pour your heart out to God. And, and there's nothing that you cannot share with him. We can pray about our personal private matters that would maybe embarrass us if others would hear. We can humble ourselves before a holy God and uh, he will hear and answer our prayer. We're not praying to impress those around in earshot. We're praying to a God who already knows our downfallings and loves us in spite of it all and has a desire to help us through. And so we can pray with humility and uh, in a personal, private way. Thirdly, prayer is precious. It's precious. One of the things we see here inside of our text is that prayer is precious. Jesus, he uses a phrase here, to the disciples, and if we kind of dig in a little bit, we see that he was actually kind of revealing something to the disciples that it, they weren't quite aware of. He says here, Jesus, he used this phrase, he says, pray to thy Father which is in secret. Pray to thy Father which is in secret. As we look at this inside of its context, and we see that when Jesus made this statement here, he was talking about the very dwelling place of God. The Jews and the disciples were well familiar with what they would refer to as the Holy of Holies, the place where God dwelt. This would be that secret place of God. And so when Jesus said to these Jews, these disciples that were there, Pray in that secret place. You can pray in that, that holy place. You can pray in that place where God dwells. He was opening up to them an important understanding that as we pray, we are literally swept into the presence of God and, and surrounded by the holiness of God. And that is really a great, wonderful picture of prayer. For centuries here, only the high priest was able to go into the holy place, the holy of holies, and he only did that once a year. And so Jesus is teaching the disciples about prayer, and he says, listen, I want you to be able to pray to thy Father which is in secret. You have access to that holy place, to that place where I will meet with you there, and you are literally praying in the very presence of God. Think about that as we gather together, as we pray, or as we get alone in our prayer closet, we are literally in the very presence of God, in the Holy of Holies, there with God. We're allowed to have access to the Holy of Holies in heaven. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in a time of need. When we pray, we are entering into the very throne room of God, that secret place, that holy place, that holy of holies. We are high priests as Christians and we can enter into that holy place. When we pray properly, we are allowed access to that throne room of grace 
It's amazing. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see, he says, I, I want you to come unto me. I'm draw, I want to draw you unto me. And one of the things that we do is we do that in the process of prayer. Prayer is a way in which we gain access to the holy place of God. It's a place where we, we ought to be. He says, I want prayer to be a priority in the life. And as every Christian, we ought to have time in which we pray. I, I would say we ought to have multiple times in which we go to the Lord in prayer throughout the day. But at least let's establish a time where it is a priority, whether it's before we go to bed, before, or whether it's when we get up in the morning, or maybe even both, maybe even midday, we pause and we spend some time with just us and God in prayer, but make it a priority. It is a wonderful privilege we have to enter into the holy presence of God. And we can share the most intimate secrets within our hearts, the struggles, those personal times, and we can bring them to God and he will hear and answer and help in those times of need. What a precious thing that we have as we can pray in the holy of holies with God himself. Fourthly, I want you to note that prayer is powerful. He says here, My Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. When we pray to the Lord out of a sincere desire to have communion with Him, He will honor our faith and our humility. And it is important to understand that God wants us to come to him in prayer. And the amazing thing is when we begin to understand that God not only wants to hear our prayer, but he also has the power to, uh, to, to answer that prayer. And on top of that, he has a desire to answer that prayer. And so as we come to him with these prayer requests and we come to him with these difficulties and problems and even personal struggles that we're having, we're not praying to uh, an idol that cannot hear. We're not praying to someone who is, who is his dumb and, and unable to, uh, to, to respond. We're not even praying to uh, maybe a, a mother or father who is alive and has a desire to help, but they don't have all the power that God has. It's not a, a child maybe begging and pleading to a mother and father for a toy that they want or some sort of privilege that they desire. We're praying to a holy, powerful God, the creator of all things, who loves us and has the desire to help his children. If you're a parent and you have children, you have, along with that, a, a deeper understanding of prayer that your children cannot have because when they make that request to you and they express that desire to you, sometimes even in tears, and as a father, as a mother who loves their children, we have a desire to minister to and meet the needs. Yes, we have wisdom to see that request, and sometimes we see the request that's being made as something that would not be helpful to that child. And not because we hate, not because we don't desire, but because we see that the request is something that is foolish and, un and will not help them, and as a result of our love, we as God may say, And that is an answer. Even if it is within our power to do so. Sometimes as a parent, as we hear those things and we say, you know, you're just not quite ready. And you know God does the same. But how fun it is to be able to say yes and see the joy and the happiness of meeting that request. And as we come boldly to the throne of God as we in a private way seek God's will for our lives 
as we follow that command and understand that God desires to meet those things in our life and we understand we're praying to a holy powerful God that can and desires to meet those needs he will if we refuse to show off in prayer he will show out his answers in prayer as if we understand and we go to him with humility God desires to show out in prayer and answer those prayers. And he has the ability to do so. He has the power to do so. And there are times where my children have asked me to do things that I cannot do because I do not have the power to do so. But that's not true with God. God has all power. God has the power to heal the sick. God has power to raise up the dead. And he says, I want to answer those requests. And he lays some guidelines out for us. Jesus is telling us here that when prayer ceases to be about us and our being seen by others, it becomes all about him. It is then that we can expect him to respond to our prayers. A lot of times I believe that our prayers are not answered because we ask with great pride. We lack humility and we're praying for uh, something that is for our own flesh. The Bible says it this way, uh, we have not because we ask not. And he says we ask and we ask amiss. We ask with our own pride and our own arrogance. But God is teaching us here in this passage that an important aspect of prayer is one of humility. He says here it's, it's a personal time, it's a private time. And he says humility is an important aspect. And I believe as we can go to the Lord in prayer and it doesn't become about us, it becomes about God, it's an amazing change in our prayer life. Those who pray for the applause of others, that's what they'll get. Well, I've heard some amazing prayers in my lifetime. But you know, it's not about the applause of men. In my prayer, I would much rather receive the ear of God than the applause of man. And so here we talk about this idea of prayer one of the essential parts that Paul says, he says, I want you to pray without ceasing. I want it to be something that's essential. It's something that's vital in your heart and in your life. Prayer is one of those essential pieces of equipment. Is prayer part of your life? Is it part of your daily life? Prayer ought to be a priority. It is something that God has commanded. It ought to have a specific time in my life and yours. If it does not or you do not have one, start with at least one. Maybe pray before you go to bed every night. Or pray as you get up every morning and set aside a time where it's you and God, a prayer time. Perhaps establish a prayer journal or a prayer list and, and begin to add to that list and write certain things down and take some time to pray. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and half an hour. Spend some time in prayer. Make it a priority. It ought to be. Understand that prayer is personal. There's a time and place for public prayer. But that's not the time we necessarily bring all of our requests to him and uh, in our uh, things that are going on in our personal life. We may do that as we pray and dedicate to service, uh, a church service to God or our offering. And, and we're, we're bringing that in a very public way. But prayer is personal and it's private and it's amazing to me. And God says, I want you to go in secret. I want you to get along with God in private. And you can share 
all of those things that are in your heart with him and ask for him to help. It's precious. What an amazing thing that we can bring our prayer into the very throne room of God. It is by prayer that we have access to the Holy of Holies. And we're praying to a God that has a power to answer and a desire to meet needs as we bring them to him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close here this morning. Father, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. God, may we as Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, may we establish a higher priority in our prayer life. God, those that are already actively praying on a regular basis, Lord, may we consider adding more time to that. Lord, it very may be some brothers and sisters in Christ that they, they pray, but they don't pray on a regular basis. It doesn't have the priority in their life that it ought to have. Lord, if they're here under the sound of my voice, Lord, before we leave today, Lord, may they spend some time with you and promise to put the priority that prayer deserves in their life. It is essential it is just as important as the breath that we just breathe. Lord, it is our life's blood. And Lord, I truly believe that if we would be consistent in our prayer life, we would see an amazing change in our ability to walk with you and see great victory in our life. God, may you meet the needs. God, may you help us, instruct us, Lord, in this essential part of prayer. We ask this in your name. Amen.